It was a fleeting moment just like this that created the timeless image of the Afghan girl. Steve has been working in Pakistan for 24 years. With each visit, he always finds time to catch up with his old friend, Salam. You were probably wondering where I was. Were you wondering where I was this I whole was time? You thought, where did he go? He forgot me. In fact, I wanted to call you when I saw you uh, on National Geographic. What was that? That was about good four or five months back. No kidding. In Singapore, you were, or you were in some place like there, and you know. You mean on? It was on uh, in the magazine. Or? No, no, it was on the television. On oh, the television, I see. You okay. were alive. Yeah. <laughs> and I was telling my kids, you know, my son. In fact, you know, that is Steve. I know him. Is that right? And in fact, the other way, I was talking to some Germans because everybody's taking that photograph. Which photograph is that? The huh? the cover of the National Geographic. Oh, right, right. And people are mad about it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we're, uh, I'm back here uh, on this trip uh, looking for her. Back at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, Glenn Miller is aging Steve's original photograph. What I'm doing here, I'm experimenting with lowering the eyelids slightly to give it a more mature look, in my opinion, with uh, shadowing here with some uh, darkness under the eyes. Here I'm adding weathering to the skin as a result of damage from the sun. Glenn changes the original lips to what they might look like today. What I'm doing now is morphing from the original picture into my final progressed image. Back in Peshawar, Steve receives good news. The teacher has been found. This is really an exciting moment because finally, after 16 years, I'm going to be able to find out what happened to that young girl. Uh, perhaps she's back in Afghanistan. Maybe she's married. Maybe she has a family. Can't wait to find out what what her fate was. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? <laughs> How are you? Hello. Oh, thank you. After 17 years. Steve is standing face to face with the teacher who allowed him in the tent school that day. Through Nasser Bagh camp, and there was a there was a tent, and uh, I remember you being the teacher, and I was thinking the best chance to locate this young refugee girl would be to find you. I wanted to show you the picture of this girl, and uh, see if you can remember her face. As She's willing to help but she must have seen thousands of faces through the years. Did, does she remember yes, she this remembers girl? The girl yes. She does, okay. Uh, a teacher is offering to take us to the school. The school is still there. She, she recognizes the girl's face, but has no idea where to find her. I asked her if they will be having a record of that uh, period. Okay. And she said, it's possible. Please. Maybe she will show us the record. Okay. Together, they return to the very spot where they both met the yeah. Afghan girl. This is the same school where I photographed that young refugee girl in 1984. Uh, it was a tent at that time, and now it's the proper school with classrooms and blackboards. We're going to look and see if we can find the records, see if we can find her whereabouts. Steve enters a secret world. A rare look into innocent faces. Each has the desire to improve her young life, to lessen the odds of an uncertain future. Yet half these girls will not complete their education. Some will not survive to become women. But despite their desperate circumstances, they have hope. And for Afghan refugees, education promises a better life. Who are these people? From inside a classroom, a clue emerges. That girl says that I know her. This girl was at the same school, she says. This girl. Okay. Was well, at the same school, but she was very small at that time. Yeah. And uh, she said that I know the family. 
the girl and the teacher agree to help Steve find the family. Rumor has it the girl has moved away, but a relative is still in the area. In Nasser Ba camp, there are few phones or addresses. It's such a maze that only the people who live here know their way around. The girl takes the teacher from house to house, searching for any information that may help them find a family member. Eventually, they discover it's the mother who lives nearby. As she approaches, she's suspicious of the large group of people searching for her. But when she's shown the picture, she recognizes the girl in the photo. This woman we met in the camp is saying the girl in the picture is her daughter. We've gotten four different names today and four different leads, but I think this is the best one. Her daughter's name, she's saying, is Alam Bibi. It means girl of the world. It couldn't be a more perfect name for this girl who has represented the plight of the Afghan people for the past 20 years. That's all that. Yeah, that's all that. I asked him, who is she? And he said, it's my mother. Oh, wow. It's amazing. I gave it to him to show it to his mother. So soon we'll find out. Yeah. If she's the I, actually, same girl. I, uh, I, there's a, about a square inch crack in the door, and I actually saw her through the door. I, if, if that's not her, it's, uh, it, it, it would be some kind of a miracle because uh, through the door I saw her. Yeah. The teacher says yeah. that I have now met her, and she remembers me. She yeah. told me that you were my teacher. Right. One problem, her husband is at work, and without his permission, no man may see her unless he's family. Oh, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, we have to wait until tomorrow, huh? Oh, <laughs> jeez. I know that you want to do it today, just now. And there is, uh, it's so near, I know. and yet so far. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you're not allowed. Yeah, right. There okay, are cultural this... constraints. Yeah, OK, well, let's... And... Uh... You know, we have to work. Yeah, with what we, you know, through the, the system, culture, you know. Sure, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we don't want to spoil. Yes. Okay, well, let's be back here sharp at nine yes. o'clock. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful now. Yeah. Steve, don't be impatient. Okay. <laughs> Wait for just one more night. Yeah. After having waited for 17 years, <laughs> tomorrow morning, yeah. God willing, uh -huh. your wish will come true. After all these years, Steve must wait till tomorrow to see Alam Bibi, perhaps the woman behind those eyes. To ease his mind, he takes a late night walk through the old city. Assalamu alaikum. I always love to get a shave when I come to the shower because they after the shave, they'll give you a wonderful head massage. So he's been shaving since he was, what, 11? Despite the head massage, Steve is still anxious. He cannot escape the image of the Afghan girl. C can you give me a special price on that? OK, 15 more for your discount. <laughs> Do you know why I want you to give me a special price? This one, this one is the local price. Huh? But you're, I'm the one who photographed her. 
I'm the photographer. <laughs> you see the name here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve McCurry? It is for you 80 rupees. 80 rupees? <laughs> You're going to give me 20 rupees discount because it's a, oh, that's very kind of you. are very generous. It's the end of a long day. Tomorrow, he hopes to be one step closer to finding the Afghan girl. I didn't get much sleep last night because um, the anticipation is, uh, is, is, is a bit much, but um, I'm hoping that uh, all goes well. The following morning, Steve sets out early. He's waited over 17 years for this moment. During the night, Rahi Muller received word that Alan Bibi's husband has granted Steve permission to meet her. So he's the husband oh, okay. Okay, good, good. of the lady. Okay, great. Well, just tell him that we're very happy to meet them and happy that they allow us to come into their home and meet the family. I think we can just sit there okay. and wait for her. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a moment of truth. <laughs> yes. I tell her it's very wonderful to meet her again after so many years. I'm just trying to uh, see some identifying uh, marks here. Um, I'm just wondering about the eyes. I wonder if her eyes change. Her, the eyes in the picture are, uh, are green. She says that uh, I have grown older. Yeah, right, right. <clears throat> and also because of the suffering, maybe. Eye color can change in rare circumstances. The, the line under the lip, under this the one. lower lip, seems very similar to the picture and to her face. It's just a little bit of, a, of an indentation which is interesting. I mean, I, I don't know, that seems very unusual. The amazing thing is that we had this photograph, you know, three feet from her face, and the resemblance is so strong that if, if this is not her, it would have to be her twin. It, it's just amazing that you can be this close and not be 100% sure. Alam Bibi grew up in Nasser Ba refugee camp. Today, she lives with her husband and three children in a village just three miles away. Her fourth child is due any day. She shares a similar story with the girl Steve remembers, violence and loss in her early years and a struggle for sustenance in later years. She also shares a striking resemblance to the Afghan girl. The life of this family is just beyond comprehension. She can't afford the 25 cents it would cost to send her children to school. I think she, in a way, symbolizes the plight, the anguish, the suffering of these many millions of people who have had to flee their country in, the, in, the, in this 20-year war. But is Alam Bibi the Afghan girl? At Iridian Technologies, Jim Cambier and Ulf Khan von Zeeland use their system on photos of Alam Bibi's eyes.